The US military are trialing secret new energy storage technology, which they say is game changing. Is it really? Well, here's what it actually is. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. The innovation unit at the US military have sourced new technology, which they say will provide power for missions ranging from humanitarian or natural disaster assistance to counteracting threats. Three new types of prototype advanced energy storage systems have been put through drills by the US Department of Defense as it looks to enhance its energy resiliency from everything from disaster relief to military operations. Now, some of this technology appears to be a bit secretive. It's hard to find out real details on it. However, the Department of Defense's Defense Innovation Unit this week awarded three prototype contracts to energy storage developers in the US, Cellcube, Redflow, and DD Danar. So what are these companies doing? Well, the innovation unit said that decentralized energy resiliency empowers the department to sustain a wide range of operations from humanitarian or natural disaster assistance to countering threats. Critical facilities are now being equipped with prototype advanced energy storage systems to fulfill energy dense operations and installation energy with resilient power system backups. The developers are facing field trials right now for their technology to ensure it meets minimal criteria, providing high availability of electric power between 50 kilowatt and one megawatt for at least eight consecutive hours. The innovation unit said such systems will help protect against threats ranging from extreme climates to blackouts and brownouts, with the latter meaning a lack of electricity available in a particular region. Uh, essentially, the United States is saying it could be a security risk to use coal or gas power plants. However, if we have renewable energy and battery backup, then this would prevent well, basically stop potential terrorist activities from being successful. Cellcube, which has offices in the Colorado and Vienna regions, will employ its megawatt scale vanadium redox flow batteries, which are being pioneered in Australia as well right now, which work by sending electrons from one side of the battery to the other via an electron catching membrane. And this battery technology does work. It's in commercial operation now at numerous sites and it's catching on with energy storage. In fact, vanadium redox flow batteries are brilliant for energy storage use. These will be used to support energy systems used by the Navy and the Marine Corps. The Air Force are trialing a megawatt scale zinc bromine flow battery developed by Australian listed Redflow. So essentially, uh, the US government is giving an Australian company some money to further develop their battery technology. So thanks, US government. We appreciate your support. That battery though, which works by plating solid zinc on the anode during charging, will enable an Air Force microgrid to provide a dispatchable solar and storage resource for peak shaving and energy resilience. The Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps will all trial four models of mobile power systems made by US-based Danmar, which use various types of vehicles packing lithium ion batteries that can provide up to 500 kilowatt hours of electricity. Essentially, what they want to do is have their big Hummer type vehicles, their big military vehicles, potentially even tanks and things like that, be able to use electric batteries. This is not something we currently do. Tanks today, they use diesel power. However, of course, then you need diesel so you've got to ship in the diesel, right? So let's say America was to go to war in Israel right now, for example, to support Israel, then they would need to bring in the fuel to run all these machinery. But if you have uh, vehicles that can run on renewable energy or batteries, that changes. All of a sudden, all you need potentially is a whole lot of solar panels. And you can, you can sit there in your tank all day and continue to run your aircon while you wait for the, the game to happen without your tank running out of fuel because you're running that tank all day to, about, to make it so that you can actually sit in the desert and not fry, right? It's a really good way of being able to have your troops in the field wherever it is around the world and not have to be reliant on shipping diesel or gasoline all the way, half the way across the world. 
The downhouse systems will be among other applications that power electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft used by the Army for reconnaissance, transportation, and logistics. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Ben Thomas said the Innovation Unit program will mean that not only does the department get the advantage of energy resilience during adverse weather conditions, but it will now be able to store energy during non-peak times and also be able to use renewable sources, optimizing best utilization and economic practices. This is not the only Department of Defense use of innovative energy solutions announced this week though. The Air Force plans to power a base in Texas with a revolutionary geothermal technology being pioneered by a Canadian startup that claims it can deliver limitless clean energy directly from the Earth's core, which is fascinating. Limitless clean energy, we've all heard that before, but this Canadian startup, their product does actually sound real. I'm gonna make a video on that one really soon. It's fascinating, but limitless clean energy from the Earth's core makes a lot of sense because the Earth's core, I mean, it's not truly limitless. Maybe it would run out of energy in about 10 billion years or something, but there is so much heat in the Earth's core that we can now access much more easily thanks to brand new technology. So it looks like the US Department of Defense will start harnessing energy from inside the Earth to power its buildings across the United States. This is fantastic news. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.